Hello, I'm looking at Benocam. We are back out on the boat again today. And we are down here at Lizard Point, which is the most southerly part of the UK. And these series of rocks here behind me are some of the most dangerous rocks around the entire country. These rocks and these reefs have been responsible for a huge amount of shipwreck losses. And today in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of these ships, some of these stories, and showing you what's still down on the seabed and telling you the story of how they got wrecked. So one of the reasons why I'm putting these videos up online is because you just don't really see many videos of any of the wrecks down here really. There's there's very little online about these wrecks, so it's just it's just good for people to see the current situation, current state of these wrecks, and to be able to tell the, the story of how they got here. Okay, so the slack water is just starting to approach, the tide is just starting to ease. You can see it's just gone lovely and calm now all of a sudden. And yeah, we're going to be kitting up now, get some scuba kit on, and we're going to be jumping in and we're going to show you what's still down there. The fully rigged Norwegian sailing ship Hansi was wrecked to the east of Lizard Point on the 3rd of November 1911. The ship was built in 1885 and was carrying a cargo of timber and pig iron when she was wrecked against the rocks in a gale with no loss of life. The wreck site still contains a quantity of its iron bar cargo and pieces of the ship's hull lie scattered all over the area below where it hit the rocks. The wreck of the Hansi is quite easy to locate, so it has been well visited over the years by others, although it doesn't seem to have been dived much in recent years. We are going to head further out now to look at our next shipwreck, out towards the furthermost collection of rocks on Lizard Point, known as the Stags. It was here on the 5th of May 1913 that the four-masted steel sailing ship Queen Margaret struck. Of over 2,000 tonnes, this is one of the largest steel sailing ship wrecks in the area. Yet on the seabed here, there is very little larger intact pieces of the vessel remaining. This area is so exposed that her steel hull has been broken and ground down by the sea over the years into much smaller sections than you would normally expect elsewhere along the coast. <laughs> Right next to the wreckage of the Queen Margaret is a large steamship boiler standing up on its end, clearly not part of this wreck. There are several missing steamships in the area, but nothing is left here on the seabed to help identify the remains. Moving back further inshore, we're going to take a look at a much older vessel that was lost in the area. HMS Royal Anne Galley was a 42-gun fifth-rate frigate of the Royal Navy. She was wrecked here on the 10th of November 1721 while on a voyage to the West Indies. Of the 200 passengers and crew, only two survived the sinking. The wreck site was discovered in 1991 by a local diver, Rob Sharrett, and is made up of a number of iron cannon in two different areas both hard to locate due to the dense layer of kelp that covers the whole site. It must also be mentioned that this wreck site is a protective wreck and the site is managed by Historic England. Both myself and Dave have visitor licenses for this site so that we can monitor what is left of the ship remains, including these round iron shot and lead musket balls. For our final site, we are going to move back into the shallow central area of Lizard Point, where many different wrecks have come aground and are very much piled up on top of each other. In places, these wreck remains are so mixed together, it is very difficult to separate them into individual sites. Some of the larger pieces of wreckage here have come from the White Star Liner, the Suvik. Built at Harland and Wolf in Belfast, this ocean liner ran aground here in 1907 
after a navigation error which resulted in a large rescue effort, saving all of its passengers and crew. After it was realised that just the bow section was firmly stuck, the majority of the wreck was able to be salvaged by cutting away the front section of the ship and floating off the larger part of the vessel, which included the engine and boilers. The bow section was left to the sea, which has now been broken down to a scattering of steel plate that does include some identifiable features, such as these large mooring bollards. It was near the bow of the Suvik where we recently discovered another previously unrecorded wreck site. This site contains a number of old iron cannon, and we hope to do more diving on this site soon to try and identify the lost ship's age and nationality. Aside from the wrecks already mentioned, this area contains a number of other wreck sites which unfortunately no longer contain enough evidence to provide identifications. These include a smaller iron steamship's bow section, and next to that is part of a steamship engine. And a short distance away, another unknown steamship boiler. At least some of these pieces of wreckage are likely to be from HMS Gloaming, a small Admiralty ship of 94 tonnes which went aground here in March 1921 and quickly went to pieces before any salvage work could take place. There's also a collection of other shipwreck features here, such as winches, ship's fittings and even a propeller, all mixed in together from numerous different wreck sites. Here he is. How was that, Dave? That was very good. Oh dear. Two cannons. And a great deal of iron wreckage. Lovely. And a lot of kelp. Yeah. Lots of gullies to explore. Right, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed this shipwreck video. Don't forget to subscribe and look at my channel. I've got loads of other shipwreck videos on there. And yeah, thanks for watching and we will catch you again soon for more videos.